Okay, welcome back. This tutorial is for grade 5 and especially the unit 4 of grade 5 in which we've been asked to make a parrot game, a game in which a parrot uh, tries to eat a fruit. And to begin with, we're going to just, let me just zoom in, remove the sprite, cat sprite, add a parrot sprite, you can search for it over here, and because the parrot on the stage is too big, just reduce the size to 50 for the parrot, sorry. Next, you can add an apple sprite and the backdrop can be jungle. There we go. So first we'll code for the parrot. Select the parrot, go to the color pal uh, code palette, select the events category and drag and drop the when green flag clicked block. After that, go to the motion category. We want to set a starting position for the parrot and it should be fixed. So we're going to take this block, go to X, Y, drag and attach it to the bottom of the when green flag clicked. X should be minus 200, could be minus 205, but not 260 because that would move the parrot off the stage. Why keep it at zero? Because we want it to be vertically center. Now if I click on the green flag with these values, you can see every time the parrot will come back to the left side of the stage. You don't have to drag it, just click on the green flag. Next we are going to use the we are going to use a counter loop counter loop in the control category it's known as the repeat block the repeat block is a counter loop because it has a number here this is the counter this means that this block will repeat whatever blocks are attached inside it 10 times we can change the number to any other number or we can attach a variable inside it to uh, repeat that many number of times. Now inside the block we need the move 10 steps block that we can find in the motion category move 10 steps and if I just click on the green flag you can see the parrot will move but we also want to f want the parrot to flap its wings. Now every sprite has an animation and those animations uh, that, that, the sprite, that the sprite has is called costume. These are called costumes and uh, these are the different looks of a sprite. And so just go to the looks category and scroll down. You don't have to scroll down that much. You just have to look at the this one. Next costume block. This will play the animation for the parrot, the flapping of the wings. And as you can see, what, what, what it just flapped too fast. You, we want to slow it down. If you want to slow it down, we need the weight block from the control category. Control category, weight block, weight one seconds. If I use it now, and now the parrot is waiting one second between each flap. A flap down is considered as one flap and a flap up is considered as one flap. That's too slow. So we are going to reduce the number. We're going to reduce the number to 0 0.2. And now if I click on the green flag, there you go. Although it's written 10 inside the repeat in the, in the counter, 
the parrot only flapped its wings five times. Now, we want the parrot to ask a question. How many times shall I flap my wings? So for that, we need to go to the sensing category and bring the ask block. This should be your third block outside the repeat loop, outside the repeat block under the go to xy block. And you can just type the new question. How many times shall I flap my wings? Question mark. Now, if we click on the green flag, the parrot goes to its starting position. It asks a question how many times shall I flap my wings but when we type in a number it won't make any effect because we are not controlling the number of times it flaps its wings to control it we want the answer variable the answer variable stores whatever we type in the bar over here that number is stored in the answer variable but as we just saw if whatever number you type the parrot is only going to flap half ta half times that number. So if you type 10, it's going to flap 5 times. If you type 20, it's going to flap 10 times. So we need to multiply whatever we type in the bar or, or whatever is stored in the answer variable by 2. The multiplication block can be found in the operators category, the green category. It's the third one from the top, the one that has an asterisk or a star. Bring it here. Attach the answer variable inside it. You can attach it on either side. It's a multiplication block, so it doesn't matter whether it's answer multiplied by 2 or 2 multiplied by answer. It would give you the same number or the same value. Now we can drag and drop this inside the counter for the repeat loop and let's test it green flag if I type 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 so now it's working now before we move on before we make uh, the crash detector or the block that senses whether the parrot is actually touching the fruit or not we need to code we need to do something for the apple. We need to write some, uh, put some blocks for the apple. Select the apple block. Apple category, ap apple sprite, sorry. Apple sprite. Events category. And now this is for the apple only. We only need three blocks. When green flag clicked, then motion category, go to XY. Y should be zero should be on the same vertical level as a parrot and we need a random number a block that allows us to pick a random number so that we can find in the operators category operators category pick random 1 to 10 now we want the apple to move horizontally uh, randomly every time we click on a on the green flag but we want it to move the full length, the full horizontal length. And as we have studied before, the stage uh, on the stage in Scratch, the leftmost uh, edge of the stage, at that point, the value of x is minus 260. And on the rightmost edge, the value of x is 260. So we want a number that is between minus 260. Uh, that starts from 260 anywhere between 260 and minus 260 and 260 so now if I click on the green flag every time it's a different position because it's a random number it's not a fixed number and the apple will move left and right but not up and down and now we want to check if the parrot is touching the apple or not. If it is touching the apple, we want the parrot to say something like yum yum or delicious or whatever. And if it misses the apple, we want it to say I'm still hungry. 
for that we need the if else block and that we can find in the control category the if else block don't put it inside the don't attach it inside the repeat loop attach it at the bottom outside the repeat or the counter loop now we need a condition we need to test a condition we need to see whether the parrot is touching the apple or not for that we go to the sensing category and bring this block at the very top of the sensing category which is no which is called touching mouse pointer bring it and attach it inside the diamond whenever the diamond the border of the diamond turns white right now it's not white now if i bring it here the border of the decision diamond as i call it turns white now we can release the mouse button and the block will fit neatly inside the diamond now obviously we don't want to test whether the parrot is touching the mouse pointer we wanted to test whether the parrot is touching the apple or not so click on the mouse pointer the, dro the drop down menu appears and select apple all we need now are two say blocks because all we want is the output the output that we want is that the parrot should say something so the say blocks can be found in the looks category say hello for two seconds bring it here and just type delicious or yum yum or whatever the instructions you've been given or whatever the requirements of the program are and a second has say hello and just type I'm still hungry or I'm I'm hungry and that is it that's the complete program for the parrot came and let's test it let me just if you can take a screenshot of this or you can pause here if you want to if you want to have the full uh, have a look at this this is also in your book on page 63 and the code for the apple these three blocks are on page 59 so let's test the program uh, how many times are the flat wings? three should be enough sorry and if because it's touching the apple it says yum yum if it misses the apple it would say I'm still hungry and that is it so try to make other programs that are not in the book or in the tutorials because programming is all about creativity as long as you know the what each block does uh, you can make any game any program uh, as long as uh, you're within the limits of the languages uh, the the programming languages capability every language has its own limits capabilities strong points disadvantages so you have to just choose the right language and thank you for watching bye bye